Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, now that we've done our PowerPoint uh, presentation and maybe you've had a chance to answer some of the uh, homework questions on the Google form, let's do a quick little lab exercise to get a little uh, hands on the keyboard experience with automation uh, as it might apply uh, very simply to an automated attack. So uh, you'll notice here I'm uh, using my a Kali Linux uh, virtual machine environment. So I encourage you to do this uh, with, uh, within your uh, Kali Linux virtual environment as well. I believe you've uh, uh, been instructed in some of our other modules to set this up. So hopefully you've got that up and running okay by now. I'll assume that you do. Um, so uh, for the purposes of the lab, we're going to make use of this uh, Python program called test.py that you see here on the uh, desktop. I'll provide a copy of the source code in the uh, material so you should have uh, seen in the zip file you got or however you're accessing the online course materials, this uh, file test.py. Um, this is going to be a little template that we're going to start from. So let's first of all get some uh, familiarity with our Kali Linux environment here and um, go ahead and open up. You'll see the second icon here on the taskbar is the terminal window. Let's open up, open up a terminal. Um, maybe many of you guys are highly experienced in working in a on the Linux command line. For some of you, uh, you might be really only used to working with what we call GUI environments. That's graphical user interface where you're using your mouse to click on everything. But in the world of uh, cybersecurity and uh, hacking and programming, the command line is really uh, still a major environment to fit, that you need to acquire some um, uh, comfort level working in and uh, some understanding of how it works. So let's work from the command line a little bit here to do this lab exercise. And so you're uh, welcome to just kind of follow along on your own device. Maybe you're watching this first and then going back to your device. You could do a little uh, split screen, um, however it works best for you. But you'll notice right here that uh, currently we're in the uh, root level of our um, operating system. So the first thing we want to do if we want to access this um, program here, uh, we're going to want to get to the desktop. So we're going to use the CD command that stands for change directory and then we'll uh, type in desktop here but a little shortcut uh, that you can do is you can type in the first couple of letters in this case like DES and then hit the tab key and you'll uh, you know it'll auto fill in uh, the directory that you might want to uh, switch to and again uh, if, again if you're very new to this environment directory and folder are kind of interchangeable so now we're at the desktop, okay? If we use the ls command, that'll list all the files in this directory. And if we do that, you'll see here we've got test.pi. Now, your uh, uh, Kali virtual uh, machine, this operating system, it's a Linux operating system. And um, uh, most, I believe, all uh, Linux distributions come with a built-in text editor that you can use. So if we want to access this test.py uh, file from the command line, we can use this text editor called vi. So if we type vi space test.py, that's going to open up our little template Python uh, program here. So let's take a little look uh, at the environment, uh, or sorry, at the uh, program here and assess what it does. Okay, uh, if you're new to programming or you haven't uh, uh, worked with Python before, this might not be very obvious to you, but it's not important uh, necessarily for this lab that you understand exactly all of the syntax because all I'm going to ask you to do for your assignment is to modify this a little bit to show that you understand how uh, automation might work for specifically a uh, denial of service attack. So in this program here, as we look through it, first of all, if you want to see line numbers within the VI text editor, you can hit the shift colon key. You'll notice down here that brings up this little colon in the bottom corner that allows me to put some input into the text editor and set some parameters. So if you say set space number, 
you'll get uh, line numbers there, and I'm just going to put those up here so that we can refer to them. So here at the top line, we're importing we're importing a, a module called subprocess. Uh, that's a bunch of code that someone else has written for your benefit, and it allows you to use some predefined functions to do a particular task. Okay, and basically what this program is going to do is it's going to execute a ping of a website. And the website uh, that we're going to ping is google.com. That's the, the string here assigned to this host variable. And then uh, ping, we use uh, uh, to do the ping, sorry, we use uh, some built-in functions in the subprocess module like popen, and they have some parameters. I don't want you to get uh, too engrossed in the details here. Um, you can read a little bit more about uh, subprocess and the functions you can use in it to, to see exactly how this is working. But the point is, uh, we set up our uh, our ping um, here with the uh, to get sorry the the uh, ping dot communicate uh, function that we call here returns a couple of values and then they we're going to tell the program here with this print command to print them out. Okay, so I'm going to put this. Uh, over to one side of the screen. A little tip here for your um, uh, desktops if you want to make efficient use of space. If you haven't seen this before, you can use the mouse and grab a window and then crash it into the side and it'll automatically uh, fill up half of the screen for you. So we're going to keep this on the right so we see what it's doing. And then we're going to right click on the terminal um, icon here, click new window. We're going to take this guy, crash it to the left side of the screen so we have a, a little split screen going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, over here you'll notice again we're in the, the root directory, so let's change to the desktop again, okay? And then let's just again see what we're looking at. we got test.py, and to run a Python program from the command line, you're going to type python space test.py, the file name, all right? So we sort of very quickly described what this is doing. This program is going to ping a website and then return some information about the results of that ping. So we hit enter on the command line, and it's going to take a second to execute the ping, but it returns some a printout of some useful uh, information. Okay, So we see uh, the, the uh, IP address for google.com that we actually pinged, and we see uh, the size of the ping message that we sent, and uh, some information. In fact, here this is uh, uh, some information about the uh, round trip time, uh, uh, getting to that IP address and uh, summary of statistics. Okay, so the point here is merely that we're using a Python program to send some traffic to Google.com. Okay, so we talked a little bit. If you recall our PowerPoint presentation, we quickly described what a denial of service attack is. A lot of uh, one type of denial of service attack is uh, uh, directing an overwhelming amount of traffic to a particular target and taking it down because it becomes overwhelmed. Okay, now Google is has a really large uh, capacity to handle traffic, right? It's probably the website that gets the most traffic in the across the entire internet. So we're not really in danger of taking Google down. But what I want you to do for this lab assignment is I want you to modify this Python code that executes the ping so that it creates either at certain time intervals or constantly a steady string of ping traffic, okay? If we wanted to automate ping traffic to Google, if we were bad guys and trying and, and Google was a, you know, some other target that was that was vulnerable on a much smaller scale of traffic, even if we had, you know, a reasonable target to try and overwhelm in a DOS attack, it would be really uh, not feasible to try to do that by repeatedly uh, running the Python uh, program manually. All right, what we'd want to have if we were going to try to overwhelm somebody with ping traffic, which you wouldn't really do, but this is just illustrating the point. It's a, a ping is a particular um, uh, type of traffic you can send that it's easy to write some code to do for you. Um, so what I want you to do is again modify this so that you can generate a constant flow of ping traffic or maybe at particular time intervals. I just want you to illustrate for yourself how, uh, how 
automation might be useful in scaling up the amount of traffic that you can generate. And of course, being uh, aspiring cybersecurity professionals, we're going to be really thinking about, uh, most likely on the defensive side, how do we handle or set up a system so that it's not vulnerable uh, or as vulnerable to a denial of service attack? How do we handle a denial of service attack once it begins? How do we shut it down? How do we protect our systems? It's a lot easier to think about how to do that if you understand a little more intuitively you know, how automation can be used to, to generate these high volumes of traffic. So I've said it a couple times that I'm going to reiterate it. And of course, there'll be a written description of the, of the assignment. I'll, you can feel free to just keep all of this code, all right, but make an adjustment to this code so that you can uh, uh, get a high volume of traffic. Now, a couple of uh, uh, useful things you might want to think about in doing that. Again, the point here is for those of you who are, who are experienced programmers, this is a, a piece of cake. Uh, for those of you who are brand new, it might be so disorienting to be uh, working on the command line environment and seeing syntax in a program that is utterly unfamiliar that it may not make a lot of sense. So a couple of hints I'll give you here is to think about you know what kind of loop structure might you use to generate a constant, unending flow of traffic. Okay, uh, if you're even if you've had an initial programming class, you probably covered several different types of uh, loops that you can implement to to do tasks repetitively. What kind of loop might you use to get a constant? flow of traffic. And if you do get a constant flow of traffic going, one thing that I'll I'll uh, tell you is um, you can you, you don't it's not mandatory to uh, implement within your program some control that shuts it down. You can just execute the command from the command line and then hit the control C button to interrupt uh, to interrupt the program before it concludes. So if you get some sort of constant flow going don't worry about implementing in your code unless you're inspired to do so. Um, some sort of uh, uh, shutdown feature, you can feel free to just do it on the command line. And again, the way to do that uh, uh, sort of crudely from the command line is to use the control, uh, hit the control and C keys um, at the same time. Okay, uh, uh, again, if, if any of this seems uh, really unfamiliar or confusing, or if I've used a lot of terminology that uh, I'm taking for granted that you, uh, assuming that you know that maybe you haven't uh, been exposed to before, we're going to do this webinar um, uh, on the weekend before the hackathon, and I'd be happy to take any questions and clarify stuff. Okay, good luck, guys.